Have you ever tried to swim against a rip current? If you have, you know it's impossible. You only swim with the current to get out of the current. Similarly, it is impossible to fight against God. God will always win. As Jesus said to Paul when he was Saul on his way to Damascus, and when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, while persecutest thou me. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Today, we're gonna to talk about these kind of messages that came from the book of Daniel, the parable of the talents and Cain and Abel. In the book of Daniel, Daniel 5, King Belshazzar threw a feast for a thousand of his princes, his wives and his concubines. They drank wine from silver and gold goblets taken from the Lord's temple while praising the gods of gold, silver, brass, iron, wood, and stone. A hand appeared and wrote the following words on the wall. Mini, mini, tekel, ufarsin, which greatly frightened the king. He summoned astrologers and soothsayers, yet none could interpret the words. Only Daniel could interpret him. He told King Belshazzar that God had numbered his kingdom and finished it. He had been weighed in the balances and found wanting. And his kingdom is divided, given to the Medes and Persians. That night, Belshazzar was slain by King Darius, the Mede, who took over his kingdom. We all have a purpose and God has given each of us spiritual gifts to fulfill that purpose. When we fail to do so, we can expect eventual punishment, whether in this world or the next. The parable of the talents illustrates this point. A master awarded five talents to one servant, two to another, and one to a third, according to their abilities. The first two invested and doubled their talents while the third buried his. The master praised the two who invested their talents and scolded the third one before taking his talent away and giving it to the servant with 10 talents. For unto everyone that hath shall be given and he shall have abundance, but from him that hath shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The parable of the talents also helps to explain the story of Cain and Abel and how Abel worked with God while Cain worked against him. And I'll quote some quotes from the book of Genesis. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground, end quote. The birth order of Cain and Abel is notable since traditionally the eldest son inherits more than younger siblings of his parents' belongings. So God gave Cain that advantage. The work they chose as a keeper of sheep and tiller of the ground also draws a distinction. Shepherds must feed and protect their flocks against wolves while farmers must feed and protect their crops from harmful weather and hungry insects and animals. Sheep are sentient while crops are not. So the loss of a sheep is of greater significance than a loss of plants. Compare Abel to Jesus as a shepherd who cares for his flock and pursues any lost sheep. Here's another quote. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground in offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offering. Numerous stories throughout the Bible convey the importance of sacrifice. God gave specifics on the type of sacrifice the Hebrews were to make in Exodus 12, as the Passover lamb was to be an unblemished male of a year old. Abel's sacrifice of firstborn sheep was therefore greater and more consistent with the type of sacrifice God wanted. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou not doest well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. In other words, sin shall rule over him. God told Cain that if he did well, he would be accepted. While if he didn't, he would be fallen victim to sin. The only example at that point of what not doing well entailed would be his parents' first sin. Adam and Eve disobeyed God due to their desire to be like him, knowing good and evil. 
The serpent had tricked Eve into questioning God and not believing what he said, which was that they would surely die by eating the forbidden fruit. The moment they ate the fruit, shame fell upon them and the process of decay began. Their days became numbered and they surely died. And Cain talked with his brother Abel and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. As God portended, Cain fell victim to sin. He knew that Abel was doing well and God viewed him favorably. So rather than imitate Abel's offerings, actions, and sacrifices, Cain decided to betray and murder the one whom God favored. Attacking God's chosen ones is replete in the Bible and today. Consider Satan's desire to sift the apostles like wheat or the dragon of Revelation 12, who is ready to devour the offspring or Jesus of the woman or Mary or the lion of 1 Peter 5, 8, who wants to devour those who aren't vigilant. Cain's jealousy of Abel and anger against God likely festered, driving him to destroy one of God's children. We can draw similarities between Cain and people today who suppress God and reject his teachings. They fight against him by corrupting their bodies and their minds, rejecting teachings such as Genesis 1:27, where God tells us we're men and women made in his image. We are all fearfully and wonderfully made, and we have value and dignity as individuals. In Galatians 3:28, Paul says of our equality, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. Paul highlighted the importance of our bodies as sacred vessels that belong to God, not us, in his first letter to the Corinthians. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. In conclusion, God gives and God takes away, and we're in no position to judge his decisions and actions as he is our omniscient, omnipresent, and sovereign creator. In other words, he is solely capable of knowing how our lives impact the lives of others. He creates and he eliminates and he sets pathways accordingly. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you'll like, subscribe, and we'll come again. And I also wonder whether you're going to do this, whether you eat, drink, and whatever you do, do it all in the glory of God. Thank you so much. You can find my blogs, you can find my writings at christian-apologist.com.